What are the basics of SQL or structured query language, the database language that runs pretty much anything you interact with online? I was at work a few weeks ago and I had to help someone reset our system back to baseline, which you do with a couple of SQL commands. But before I did it and blew out everything, I used the two most important SQL commands on the planet. So important that I'm even going to talk about them before I talk about my sponsor. Those commands are begin transaction and rollback transaction. These two commands will save you a lot of heartache, and I'm going to tell you about them right after I tell you about something else that'll save you a lot of heartache, and that's Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN is having a big deal right now with pricing that's only $1.83 a month with three months extra and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get many of the benefits of Atlas VPN for a really low price. Click the link in the description below. It's Valentine's Day, and instead of chocolates or flowers, you really should give the gift of security with Atlas VPN. Roses are red, violets are blue. A VPN is what I rely on, it's true. It keeps my online life safe and secure, and it helps make sure my data is kept pure. I've made people mad from Russia to Iran, so virtual machines are what I use whenever I can. Atlas VPN lets me browse unopposed as I research all of America's foes. It's super easy to use. Select your country of origin, click this button, and you are protected. Atlas VPN acts as a tunnel between your computer and the public internet so that hackers and rogue government agents can't penetrate. So click the link in the description below to take advantage of Atlas VPN for $1.83 a month with three months extra and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect yourself and your Valentine. Thanks for sticking with me. So if you work in cybersecurity or in programming, sooner or later, you're gonna encounter some kind of situation where you need to run some kind of SQL command to either fix something or reset something, or just query some information and you don't have a programmer around. Now, if you wanna follow along at home, the SQL script code that I use to create the database we're gonna see in this example can be found on my GitHub or my website. And you can access that from the link below as well. If you don't want to build and run your own SQL Server, you can use SQL Fiddle and kind of follow along there. Everything starts with a good schema. But what's a schema? Well, it's an abstract design that represents the storage of data in your database. Oftentimes you see it diagrammed out just like this. What's a good schema though? Well, you can have several interpretations, but the general consensus is that a good schema is normalized. So what's normalization? Well. Normalization is the practice of organizing data, eliminating redundancies, and establishing good relationships in your tables. So what's a table? A table is a database object that represents all data in a database. You can find your tables by opening up SQL Manager, opening up databases, uh, going to the database, and expanding tables. And here are my tables. So how do we get information from a table? Well, that leads you to the most important command in SQL. It's known as select. You're probably going to be using select a lot. So let's say I have a table named employee right here. And I want to get everything in that table. SQL is actually a pretty intuitive language. All we do is say select star from employee. And here is your data. Now the star or asterisk means get everything. So if we only want a few columns, like just the first name and last name, we would say select first name, comma, last name, no asterisk, and that just gives us the first and last names. But what if we want a specific set of records? Well, that's where the where clause comes in. So let's say we want to get a list of all employees who have been terminated. Let's say uh, in this terminated field, employed is a zero and terminated is a one. Then all we would say is select from employee where terminated equals one. Now, this gets me a list of all terminated employees. Note that you can also use a greater than or a less than to chain these queries together. So let's say we want to get a list of all of the current employees who make over $100,000 a year. I would just say select from employee where salary is greater than 
100,000. And that gives me a list of everyone whose salary is greater than 100,000. But what if you want to match strings with wildcards? Then you can use the keyword like. So let's say I want to get everybody who has the string Beth in their last name. Well, I can do select from employee where last name like, and I'm going to use a wild card here, a percent sign and Beth. And this will give me a wild card match for anyone whose last name has Beth at the end. So that could be an interview question. What's the difference between like and equals? And the difference is that like allows for wild cards. Now, if you look at this table, you'll see a column for job code. Now, this job code goes to another table called employee type. Now, let's say I want to get everybody's associated job code with their actual job name. Since every employee has a job code, I just need to use this lookup table here and I can see that Rayanne is a testing team lead. But how do I link those two things together? This is when you do an inner join. Joins are what make SQL so powerful. There's many different kinds of SQL joins, left joins and right joins and full joins. I could do a video just on joins, but you're probably going to be using an inner join the most. So if I wanted to join the employee table with the employee type, here's how I would do it. Select from employee, inner join employee type on job code, where the employee type equals the job code. Now this is going to give you the job code and the job name attached to each other. And if this is too much information for you, if you have too much information on screen, you can always reduce the amount of information that's showing up just by eliminating that asterisk and doing something like first name, uh, last name, and job name. And if we run that, now everything is connected properly without all that extra information. One final thing. Now, do you remember at the beginning of the video where I talked about begin transaction and rollback transaction? Well, these two commands will save your job. If you ever have to do a massive delete or a massive update, you can't afford to get something wrong. So begin transaction and rollback transaction will actually help you roll something back if you make a mistake or you want to test something out before you actually commit it. Here's how you would do it. Let's say you want to delete all terminated employees. So as you can see here, uh, terminated, if a terminated is one, that means that person has been terminated. So you would normally just say delete from employee where terminated equals one. But are you absolutely sure you're doing the right thing? So if you add in the word begin transaction, and after you actually do the delete, roll back the transaction, What this will do is it will prevent the transaction from fully committing. So we'll be able to see what it looks like before, after we commit, and after we roll back. All right, so here we go. So before we commit, before we actually do the delete, we can see that the terminated people are in the database. This is what we want because we haven't deleted anything yet, right? After we delete, right here, we can see that there are no more terminated people in the database. So the plan worked. But if we come back to here, we can see after the transaction has been rolled back and we do a select of all employees, these employees magically reappear. This is a safety feature and it will save your job. Always use begin transaction, rollback transaction if you're ever going to delete or update any kind of records to make sure that you're doing the right thing before you commit it. And that is the absolute basics of SQL that Every developer or cybersecurity guy should probably know. And thank you so much for watching.